Everybody, it's Tyler here at the 2022 Indiana Robox Invitational. Checking in team number 4499. The Highlanders coming out of Colorado. Uh, division finalists this year. A lot of finalists this year uh, for this team. Uh, we can't wait to talk more about this team on Behind the Bumpers. Just, if you look at their packaging, just a very well-packaged machine. Uh, very efficient as well, too. Nice wide intake. Uh, so can't wait to talk more about this. By the way, to help me do that, I have Haley, Tyler, and Adarsh. And this robot here, you're going to hear a little bit more about automation. Of course, that ball path through the robot, all coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Did you know that over 30% of the student population at Kettering University was in high school robotics? These same students have received a portion of over $7 million from robotic scholarships from Kettering University. See why so many in first choose to go to Kettering University at Kettering.edu. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. So Haley, let's start out on the uh, intake of your robot here. Tell me a little about uh, just some of the design that went into it. Very wide intake, obviously, with your sword drive affords you a lot of uh, uh, area to pick up that cargo. So love to just hear more about it. So we designed our intake with a touch it, grab it kind of method. We wanted to ensure that if we're ever near a robot and we have in cargo near it, we want to be able to keep our cargo near us so we can get our shots in. We have a four bar linkage on our intake. That way we can let it collapse if we ever run into walls, especially with being behind the hub, it's hard to see, so we want to make sure we're getting our balls that we need to behind there as well. We also chose Polycarp because we want to make sure it's flexible so we could go anywhere we needed to. We also chose to use pneumatics, that way we could keep the front area clear of any motors and excess room that we don't really have access to at the moment. So when having this uh, wide of an intake and having it be kind of flex as well too, uh, what considerations do you have to take in mind in regards to like having it damaged or broken or anything like that? So we always have extra backups for our intake given that it is polycarb and if anything snaps, we want to be prepared. And having a wide intake allows us to have multiple balls come in, that way we can organize them to go into the magazine. So the goal was just to be prepared for anything that could happen, whether an intake snaps or not. Let's talk about your magazine a little bit. Uh, so this is a, obviously a very compact space you have coming in. Uh, in the middle here, there's this little kind of this bump uh, that looks like they try to get the cargo up. Tell me more about that and everything else that's gone into it. So our initial design with the intake had just one wheel and a curve on the back. And we realized that that was really tall and we didn't want to waste our room near the top. And we also want to lower our center of gravity. So this is our second rendition of the, in of the feeder. And so that bump in the center, we had an idea of doing a dual intake. Unfortunately, we didn't get there quite yet. So we had the bump in the center to have enough compression on both sides of the, of the feeder. Yeah. And so we wanted to make sure our ball was going in and always having contact. So we had those big green compliant wheels to make sure that every ball is being touched by something so it can go up. We also shortened it. It used to be like 14 inches and now it's about 12. So when you when you looked at like shortening it, so like the it was just that the bump that shortened or the whole structure shortened? Uh height wise it shortened. Oh okay, very interesting on that. So uh, let's keep moving on your robot. We're gonna cover your shooter uh, next on it. So let's talk more about that. And then uh, any cargo we want to feed we can do that too. But I uh, obviously have a, a very nice uh, package shooter here. Some adjustability it looks like as well. of a secondary uh, wheel coming out. And then afterwards we'll talk about uh, some sensors that are in your uh, ball path as well too. Sure, yeah. So we have, um, I guess, your typical shooter that you see a lot of years uh, with just a central flywheel. Uh, and then we have an adjustable hood here. Um, so, yeah, as you can see, so this allows us to shoot from practically up against the hub um, to the outer bounds of the field. Uh, and we also, this year, we uh, found through testing that having a backspin compensation roller was uh, really critical to getting the balls to stay into the hub. Uh, early testing showed them just bouncing right out. Yeah. Uh, so that was uh, a nice addition um, before our first uh, regional competition. Where's kind of the sweet spot for Highlanders? Where do you like to shoot on the field? Um, behind the tarmac area. Sure. Yep. 
Um, and speaking about that, I'd love to hear, uh, Darsha, a little more in regards to some of the sensors of that ball path uh, as we come through. Uh, and I know you do have some vision as well, too, so let's hear a little bit more about that. So uh, during the ball path, we like to use uh, two beam break sensors. Um, so we use one beam break at the start of our magazine, uh, right about um, right here. Uh, so we have a beam break right there, and we have another one at the top right before our flywheel. Um, this lets us really have accurate control of where the balls are, um, so we can really accurately say, here's where both balls should end up. Um, and then in addition to that, we have some cameras to help with shooting and picking up balls. Um, we have a limelight on the front um, that will help us target and find the distance to the target. Um, and we also have a driver camera on the back, so uh, we can see balls that are behind the hub. And with a press of a button, um, from going from um, field or field centric swerve, we can go to robot centric. So we can essentially make it so that uh, whatever we see on the driver cam, you can just move like that towards the ball. So do you, do you see like does your drive team actually does implement that and does use that during a match? Yeah, that we use that a lot during uh, Houston. Um, it was really helpful because it clears out those two or three pesky balls that yeah. just end up slowing you down um, that are just behind the hub. Um, so it was really useful to have. I really like that thought process. I, I, I don't think I've talked to another team yet. Like other teams have had the cameras there to detect that, but having the thought process say, hey, what if we actually do go to robot centric for that? It's really interesting. And I, I'm trying to think in my brain, like if I was operating a robot, that process unit, and that does make a lot of right. sense to me. So that's, yeah. that's really cool. Yeah. So. Uh, let's keep moving on your robot. We're going to hand it back over and talk about your uh, climbing mechanism. Uh, then we'll talk about automation with your climber as well, too. But talk to me nice. about the structure itself and what's gone into it. Yeah, so for our climber here, uh, that was uh, one of the mechanisms that we spent the most time during the season on, uh, going through multiple iterations and just complete um, different designs. Originally, we were thinking of kind of the standard one set of telescoping hooks go up and then another set that leans your robot back. Um, but we found that just with um, size constraints that wouldn't really fit on our robot. Um, so this version here is a lot more compact. It's a one-stage elevator uh, that both comes up and articulates out to grab the next bar. Um, and it just pulls onto these stationary spring hooks, um, which hold on to the bar um, below the one that we're trying to reach. So we can get, um, we normally go for two. Um, yeah. But we can go anywhere from one through four. Uh, we like to start at two and we can get up to the traversal relatively quick. Well, let's talk about that climb sequence that's gone into it. So Darsh's going to show that off and kind of narrate that process as it goes through. And uh, sure. just tell us about what's gone into actually getting to the point of where you are now. Sure. So uh, when we start off on the ground, we want to go to bar two. So we go up and then pull down. Um, from here, we want to go to bar three. So we go up, out, and then hook onto the bar, and then we bring it in. Um, so then we're going to repeat the process, except when we uh, try this initially, we found that we were um, stalling and kind of swinging on bar three. So we, we ended up having to um, account for the swing. So essentially, we use the Navex to account for that and uh, hook onto the bar no matter which way we were sure. swinging. So X. So from here, if we were to hit B, so we hook onto the bar. And then if we were to move the uh, robot by tilting it, the hook actually stays in the same spot yeah. no matter which way you tilt. That's awesome. What's your timing uh, approximately get up, get up to uh, traversal? So uh, if we start on the ground, it's usually around 12 to 13 seconds to get to the traversal bar. Well, as we're filming, Skylanders have been looking fantastic here at IRI so far. You're also competing at Chessie Champs uh, later on, too. Right. Uh, so some great uh, high-end competitions we'll see this team at. So thanks a lot for taking the time here at IRI. Good luck here, and can't wait to see you at future competitions and future seasons. Thanks a lot. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Did you know that over 30% of the student population at Kettering University was in high school robotics? These same students have received a portion of over $7 million from robotic scholarships from Kettering University. See why so many in first choose to go to Kettering University at Kettering.edu. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com.
Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.